bring you the game of Hopper Zero from a Team X against Western Wolves. It's going to be a DD2 matchup, so really interesting to see how these two teams are going to play this one out. Uh, of course, in in my in my mind, I would I would say Western Wolves has the big favorite here. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, they're the more pr more proven team of the two. Um, I mean, we've seen uh, Public Lear play really good lately. They just beat NIP. Recently. Yeah. And uh, but as I said before, they're a kind of team that you cannot really. Uh, you're not always sure how, what, what kind of team is coming to play. I mean, yeah. one day they could be really good, and the other day not so good. So um, it's really hard to say. At the same time, I think Wolves have had uh, their fair share of issues as well. I think uh, yeah. almost falling falling apart a few times and stuff like that but at the same time they've been uh, racking up some pretty good results so um, I think yeah they're the favorites so it's gonna be as I said on DE dust 2 and we're gonna start with the knife rounds we have only got I think one one person tweeting at least me saying what we should talk about and that wasn't like we should talk about the weather and stuff and I was like N <laughs> what why <laughs> why it's always sunny in dust 2 it's always sunny in dust 2 and it always smells like land in at dreamhack so like there's your weather forecast right there yeah that's one for sure yeah white screens and, and sweaty nerds <laughs> that's the weather forecast for dreamhack well yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're, we're gonna have the game going live any minute now just waiting for uh, the last player from western walls to join up we are waiting for pimp He's just going to get set up uh, with his PC here. And uh, there we go. There we go. He joins up. Anyone missing? And Pimp joins the server. So we should be ready to go into the knife round very soon here between our friends Western Wolves from Denmark, my home country. And they're going to be up against uh, the wonderful Swedes from Publisher SA. I'm not quite sure if I'm pronouncing the name correctly, but Team X, you know them. Yep. I'm not sure if it's Publisher or Public Lear. Public Lear? I don't know. I'm not Swedish, so... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. We'll yeah. just call him Team X. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> no one knows. Don't start just the sexist pimp, so that's the reason why we're waiting. Uh, the team Western was not quite ready yet here. But yeah, it should be a good game. And of course, uh, the game that I'm really looking forward to is uh, the one after this. That's going to be the winner of this game. And they're going to play against Nip. Yep. And Without saying too much, I think Western Wolves, as we said, they're the favorites here. Western Wolves versus Nip. That's a rematch of the Copenhagen Games 2013 Grand Final. So that's going to be an interesting match for sure. Yeah, especially I think NIP just trashed Western Wolves there. I think yeah. I think they got like two rounds on NIP. So uh, I think maybe they, they want their revenge here. Who knows? Uh, especially, we haven't seen the best NIP lately. So uh, uh, it should, should be really interesting. Yeah, and also the, also the fact that Western Wolves they have kind of been off the radar mm, for yeah. a while here. Like yeah. they, they were doing, they were doing really good at Copenhagen games. Then they had some internal problems, as we talked about. Yeah. And now lately, they haven't really been playing that much online. Yeah. They played in the Danish leagues, but that's kind of it. And well, maybe we could see a new revitalized Western Wolves with new strats, new setups, new everything. And if Nip are going to play the way they played online for the last couple of days, I think Western Wolves might have a chance in that match. Sure, but at the same time, I think NIP is the kind of team that uh, they pick it up on land. Yeah. It's land side. Exactly. You know, that, that's a, that's when their best comes out of them. And uh, but yeah, we'll see it. We we'll see. But uh, I think uh, uh, it, it should be interesting. Sure. But this game here, Dust Two, it's gonna be one of those maps where I think knife rounds plays a big role because uh, you always want to start on T side, even though it's kind of even. But still, you know, you want to start on T and rack up a good good lead on T side and then. Get their defense going at CT. Um, so um, I think it's going to be good knife round coming yep. up. So um, almost ready to go now. Just fixing one computer, and then we will be going into the knife round between these two teams here. So it's going to be really good, I think. Um, as you said, that T balance there on the map, you want to stand on that T side. And I think um, our friends from Western Wolves, they're going to be really, really, really eager to get on that T side because they haven't been practicing so much or they haven't been playing so many official games so their strats might be a, a little bit of a surprise here and if, if they can stand that seaside if they can get their strats out and get maybe a six to zero lead or something get yeah. a good momentum rolling i think that could just take them the game right there yeah and uh, dust 2 is the kind of map where you can play really well even though if you haven't practiced that much uh, it is commonly known as the map for mixed teams and stuff yeah. also so uh uh, it should be a map where they, even though if they haven't practiced as much, they could, they, they are going to be strong at. I'm pretty sure, especially with the good opping abilities by Nico 
is going to play a crucial part here yeah. on both sides. Uh, he's he's going to be the one going in, getting the first picks as T. He's going to be the one that is going to build the wall of China somewhere on this map with his off, maybe middle. I'm not sure. Uh, so um, that I'm looking forward to see what is Nico's form of the day because he's yeah. the key player for that team along with Kim, I think. Yeah, uh, I agree very much with that. And Nico, if he plays his best, he can beat anyone. Like he can take out Guardian no problem when he plays his best. Sure. The problem is he's a little bit shaky in his playstyle. Some some games he, he he plays not terrible, but he plays okay. Yeah. And other games he's insane. And if he brings that insane orb game here, I think uh, we're gonna see a big victory. But right now we're gonna go into the knife round here between uh, Western Wolves and Publisher.se, of course, right now. Yeah. Don't be tricked by the headline there saying Refuse and Nip Gaming. It is, of course, Western Wolves and Publisher, as you can see here, going into the knife round here in Dust 2. So, so like I said, I'm, I'm sure both teams want to get, get that T side first, most likely, unless they have some insane strats going on for, for CT. Uh, yeah, we could be seeing some very interesting setups. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta have to play really like unorthodox on us to CT, I think. Yeah. Um, if you play too passively, like uh, kind of way too ordinary, then um, you're most likely screwed. Uh, at least back in the day, uh, this uh, Swedish team always liked to go up cat a lot. They would smoke spawn, jumping down there, and split down A. So. Uh, you gotta either play like really super aggressively or like super super passively and just retaking that A side a lot of the time with CT against them. So right now we're gonna have Publisher starting on that tower side as you said. For one minute says Pimp, one second says Clave. Uh, we should be ready. <laughs> Which one is it? <laughs> no one knows. Maybe 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah, these teams are just gonna get in their little huddles and just uh, talk about what they're gonna do here. I think that's, that's what usually uh, the Western Wolves are doing right now, just standing in spawn here. Yeah. Rising up from their PCs and saying, okay, what we're going to do. I don't think they're ready at all. So, oh, there's the yeah. movement. Yeah. Not live, yeah. They're, they're doing the huddle right now. So they're not really at their computers. Just talk about what they're going to do here. What kind of setup are they going to run? That's the question. What kind of standard setup are we going to see in the pistol and the first buy run? That's really going to dictate how they're going to play the rest of the game. Yeah, uh, for, the, for the terrorist, Pronax, I think, has always been uh, the kind of uh, uh, in-game leader that pays attention to detail. Yeah. Even in 1.6, he was always really detailed with his strats from at least what you can see from the outside. And uh, in CSGO, detail strategies are really important as well. You know, you gotta know where you place your smokes and uh, you gotta know where you place your flashes. So uh, it's interesting to see on, on a map like Dust too, how, uh, what kind of plays they're gonna be showing here. If there's gonna be a lot of fakes or if they like to play straightforward. But I think it's gonna be pretty slow side is what we're going to see here. Yep. Execution right now going down, <laughs> it looks like. That was pretty funny, actually. <laughs> yeah, they're just hiding behind them. And as the sound goes out completely uh, in my headset. Okay. I can no still sound hear you. at all. So, uh, yep. Can't hear anything right now, but it looks like we're going live. We're wonderful. going live. <laughs> wonderful. Uh. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So. <laughs> Just gonna take my headset a bit off so I can hear what my co commentator is actually saying as we go live into the first round of this DE Dust 2. Have fun coming out of Nile. And uh, of course, playing for Western Wolves, gonna be Pimp, Nico, Glaive, MSL, and Nile. Playing against Team X, not tacking up as Publisir. Oh, right, there we go. It's just this team name is uh, it's stacked up now. It's gonna be Lide, uh, RDL, Pronax, Pith, and Spitfire. So here's the setup right now. Too long. One in that CT spawn, one middle, one B. And the Terrace team, that three man down in Lois, two outside along. Pronax already taking significant damage, as we do see Pimp right here behind the wall. He's able to hear what they're doing right now in middle. And um, let's see here if he can get in. Coming in with one, that's RDL going down. Pith coming in with a second one. It looks good so far for Pup this year for the Swedes here. Nico still stuck here behind that smoke. It looks like it's going to be an A push. This is great. But look at Nilla. He's coming in from behind. If he can backstab them, it's going to be really, really good. But Nico still has to hold out on that A bomb. So if the Terrace want to go there, looks like it so far. Nilla picks up one from behind. They're going on to shore right now. Nico still here in CT spawn. Equipped with that P2K. So, just going to have a look here what he's going to do. It's a 3v4 bomb is planted. And uh, Nico comes up here with that P2K, comes in with what? 
Can he grab it second? No, he's not going to do that. And Nile's taking out. Insane round from Pyth there. And that's going to be 1-0 to zero for Pop this zero Team X there. Yeah, nice. Well played by the Swedes there. Uh, initially, they were probably planning to go through that middle. Smoke and CT spawn. They got the first two kills. They, uh, they got flashed, so they fell back. First, they were trying to go long, but then there was one pushing there. So they decided to go up on Cat, which was free. They got the bomb down and just held down the side very well. Getting 1-0 uh, up on yeah. those two B sides. 1-0 up, and now my headset is working. Good. So everyone is happy. RDL picking up the first one with a Glock here at Long Pim, coming in with a reply. He actually got two picks with a Glock. He didn't yeah. buy anything at all and got two out of it. That's yeah. pretty good. His role was basically to scout what was going on out there on, uh, on Long, and uh, he got two kills. At before dying, so mission accomplished there. So, Pronax here gonna come in with that bomb plant. CT's not really having anything to do here. Uh, it's gonna be an insanely hard round here, insanely hard after plant situation, and they're probably not gonna get any anything more out of it as Pim is the last man standing. 1v4, Lido's low on HP, but he's not gonna be facing him, and Pim will just be taken out here. Yep. So. Just a matter oh. of seconds now. Oh, he's not going to catch him in that spawn. He's just trying to get some extra kills and yeah. some cheeky kills from that position. Um, your your uh, primary objective on eco round is to get as many kills as possible. So you can keep the money situation as uh, even as possible for the first weapon round. Unfortunately, well, they, they get two kills, but oh, oh, they just get one kill. I'm not sure which one is it, but still. I think um, it's just one. Yeah, you want to get like three kills maybe to really affect the money. But uh, Public Lear just played, Team X played it really well there. Just uh, uh, one guy scouting up long and uh, people going up on cap, getting the bomb down, holding it, uh, locking down the site. So right now, the last eco coming out of Western Walls, only a cool pistol. Three man stack on long, Going B all now. flashed, and it's a full B push. MSL doing good work here though with the P250. Picks up the first one. The Terrace are still waiting. They know he's exactly there. Nearly coming in from behind. Everyone is rotating apart from Glaive, who's on 15 HP. And there's nothing Glaive can do to stop this really. As someone just did something in League of Legends. <laughs> oh yeah. wow. Wow. Yeah. That was a classic CS uh, anti eco round there. One guy spotting down middle as T. And there three, I think it was three guys just going into B and rushing as they only saw one guy running to towards B. So uh, classic, classic CS right there. But a good job by Western Wolves getting two kills and uh, Pronax is really low. Pronax has to run away. Um, that opens the bomb side up. Maybe Neil can win this 1v1 and grab a, a third kill. That would be good. Oh, well, it's going to be Lin in, and he grabs three kills for himself. And Team X are going to be up three to zero. Of course, Team X from Sweden, not as uh, as it says on the uh, on the top there, with the Danish flag. That is, of course, Western Wolves. But yeah, three to zero for them. Yep, and here comes the first, uh, the second crucial round of this of this game, where Western Wolves. Let's see how their CT plays out. How they like to play it. Uh, are we going to see Nico on the off? Yep, we are. He goes for that first pick, not looking down towards that suicide area where the terrorists actually were coming in with the AWP and Spitfire. Former Lemondorf's player, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, looking, at, the looking at the Swedes, they seem like they're expecting uh, the CTs to be pushing. They're just playing really, really passively. One guy just holding the tunnels, three guys just basically waiting outside. Uh, the long doors, and uh, they have an op as well with the Spitfire just uh, zooming in through the doors and waiting for someone to push. And uh, they're taking the first 45 seconds, basically doing nothing, yeah. just waiting for uh, Western Wolves to do the initiative. But uh, they're instead they're not doing anything. So here we're gonna have um, RDL coming out towards long. And there's two smokes down, and he's, he's hiding here. Yeah, he snuck up behind that that blue container. See if he can do anything from there. Meanwhile, his teammates are going through mid. Yep, let's have a look here over towards Glaive. Glaive is going to be caught off guard. He goes into that B bomb site. He's not killed, but the, it's going to be a B push right now. Bomb coming in here towards that tunnel. Little Pronax with kills all of them. Glaive only grabbing one. And yeah. that's going to leave Nico 1v4. And with an orb, he's surely not going to clutch this. So this is just going to be 4 to 0 for Team X. This is uh, quite a surprise for me, really. Oh, well, there was. Very, very well played from the from the Swedish guys. They um, they played it slow, like I like I called it before it started. Like they just were waiting uh, for the unorthodox from the CTs, who then did not do anything out of the ordinary. Yeah. Uh, then what happened? They took over. Like uh, they snuck up. Uh, I think it was RDL up on the uh, on long behind the blue container, while uh, Nico gets annihilated by RDL, and uh, at the same time they um, managed to get through the mill doors. 
get smoked up CT spawn and to split it B and uh, got the kills. That's where it came down yeah. to. Yep, great execution there from Team X, showing that they are not just uh, an eco round team that can take semi buys against decoing CTs. They can actually also win buy rounds. So they're going to be up four to zero here on the Terry side. You want to get that lead on the Terry side. You want to get that perhaps nine to six score line. And right now they're up four to zero. So really looking good for the Swedes right now, as the Danish Wolves will be on an eco. Yep. And uh, seems like uh, the Swedes are playing it slow, but uh, MSL is getting the first pick. Yeah, that's really, really important, playing uh, eco against weapon. If you can get that first frag, and Pronax is also on 3 HP, maybe they can pick up a weapon here. Yeah. Blade going in. That would be huge for them. I mean, they have a huge disadvantage in money right now. Uh, looking at the, the Team X has a lot of money already ranked up, and they're going to have even more after this round unless they get killed. Um, if they drop a lot of weapons, unless they do that, they'll have a lot of money. Let's see here, the grenade comes in, it is good, does wow. 50 damage to RDL, and that will push them back for just a little bit, Pronax still very low, Glaive trying his luck here, and it'll take down to 19 with that grenade, and let's see who is it we have, we have MSL right here. A lot of stacking going on for A, there's, there's four CTs on that bomb side right now, let's see if they actually go there, no, they turn oh. around, they do exactly the right decision that they could do there, they, they played their cards right, they're going towards B, Let's see if Glaive can do something. He's really, I think it's really, it's really, yeah. He needs to take some oh, fraction. Oh, no. he misses the shot on Pronax. So we some three HP. And that's going to allow the terrorist to run straight into the bomb side. Double grenade comes in from Spitfire. Nico lands one with a pistol though, but it's still a 2v3. Trying to grab that P250. Bomb is now down. Two on two. The terrorist. Two and two. Pimp Pips on one. And oh, this could go anyway right now. Pimp misses a shot with the AWP. And RDL takes down Nico. Pimp now 1v2. They know where he is. He's with an orb. It's extremely hard. For Pim to do anything in this situation. I think he should just save the weapon. Yeah, exactly. What is he doing? Oh, oh wow. wow! He's winning the round, is he? He has an actual chance. He's going in for the final frag. Can he grab it with a P250? It would be huge, but he's not. But still a very, very good eco. Indeed. I mean, uh, initially it looked like Team X just played it perfectly. They, the first it looked like they were committing on A, which would have been a huge mistake. On uh, considering Russian Wolves have, had they had four TTs right there, but then they reverted and went, went to B, and somehow I don't even know how that round got that tight. Oh, that was so weird! <laughs> it all just happened like they, <laughs> it was weird, but still um, really good. But, well, both teams did really well, Dark. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, MSL did get shot through that wall, middle wall there. Oh, middle doors actually. It's Nico plays his normal AWP play here at long. What they do basically, we can wait right now as Nila takes that prize. Um, they have one orb in middle, that's going to be Glaive for the most part, then Nico orping up long. And then uh, they're going to have MSL in towards B, and Pimp and his teammate on that A-bomb side. So that's how they're going to set it up. Looks like it's going to be a short push here. Glaive on that B-bomb side, nothing is there. Pimp is right now in the action with that M4, goes for the frag, Ponax picks him up. Nico now has to do something here at long. The terrorist are coming in, getting that bomb planted. Can he get into Pimp? Can he take out the bomb planter? Before it goes down, he's taken out by Spitfire. Great shot, Glay now coming into replay. Here from middle, Nile is actually out long right now. He's gonna try his luck here with the AWB lands one. So many cluttered up CTs on or terrorists on that bomb side. Can he land a second one? Not looking like it. Can Glaive here come in with one? No. Too many orbs for Western Wolves. Wow. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> whatever they're playing there. <laughs> But yeah, that down right there, that, as it's getting really loud out here, <laughs> Spitfire was the decisive player in that round. He won that deal against Nico on long, and then he got the second pick as well on the guy on long. And uh, basically, that was Spitfire's round. They're really excited for Spitfire, man. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe it's us, I don't know. Woo <laughs> <laughs> League of Legends! Yeah. Anyway, oh, uh, Team X is getting six and zero up right now, so yeah. it's going really well for them. It's actually quite the opposite of what wow. I really predicted as Nico actually lands that first shot onto Spitfire. So this could be the turning point for them. They're going to try and push one guy out to long into that pit, and it looks like it's split A to me right now. Yeah, it is going to be a fast split on A. Nico here. On that A bomb site with that AWP has to make sure he's not going to be picked up from short. They're going to boost one onto short. Then he can take out the players that long with that AWP. Let's see, are they going to push in soon? Way behind in. on Cat. Oh, Nile also straight down here in the action with the Peter 50. Can he grab one? He grabs one. He goes for that second in that smoke, picks it up. It's now all on Lide, but Lide is still alive. Two kills, 1v3. 
and Nico is fairly low on HP, so this is actually doable. He has to play this one correctly. Let's see if he can do that. One coming in from behind. He has a little window here. When he could push out and kill MSL, he's not going to do this. Pops that smoke up, makes sure the CCs can't see him, and then he pushes him, but it's too late. Blade picks him up through that smoke, and that is going to be the first round for Western Wolves here, and it's going to be one to six. Yeah, they're trying to do a change of pace there, going for a fast A split, but it did not work out for them at all. Uh, seems like uh, I don't think they should be doing that anymore, because it was pretty horrendous that round yeah. right there. Compared to how they've been executing before, it's been pitch perfect. So, um, but Nico getting that first kill, and they just denied him everywhere. Uh, maybe, let's see if they slow it down or not. Have a look here. It's gonna Seems like they've, they've snuck up one on long again behind the container and then slowing it down afterwards. Nile yep. trying to do some damage here. Aste gonna push out two here towards long. Can he count? No, oh, he's not landing that shot. Whoa. Double nade not doing any damage at all, I think. And Spitfire might get surprised here by Nila jumping in here. Lands one onto Nico. There goes the instant flash, and he's gonna push in. But look at Spitfire. Even though he was flashed, made his way back out of that long house. And now he's in a position where he probably can't miss the shot. Nile. Going to get flashed here, and that will allow the Tyrus to run away and go towards this B seems, bomb yeah, side. Seems like they're commenting, commenting towards B, uh, where, where we have, uh, I think, yeah, MSL. Oh, oh no, but RDL, he just breaks him right there. Uh, that, is, that could have been the deciding frag of this round, basically. Yeah, because they're yeah, right yeah. now shot completely off. They have smokes down here towards CT middle, and Pyth is even there as well. And the CTs just can't rotate. Yeah, this is going to be a three-man save. Yeah, they're so. saving it up, which is a good decision right there. Taking B side out in a, in a three-on-five situation is basically a mission impossible. Yeah, impossible. Yep. And, uh, the crowd agrees with us. <laughs> it's actually funny, like, we yeah. say something and then it goes, Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Let's I don't play League of Legends, but right now I'm loving it. Yeah. And that's going to be the save. Yep. So, At two weapons saved and one frag coming in there. Yep. At least they got the two saved, but then they went around and lose around right after. That is the worst scenario. Now they're buying up as much as they can. They don't have the mo uh, Yeah, well, I think they have bought up everything, yep. So this round here, if Western Wolves, they have to win this round, otherwise they're going to be on an eco. Yeah, and otherwise uh, we're going to have the Team X here. Nico they're going to be up for eight, kill. eight rounds. Nico getting that first kill there along, following along with Nile, but his teammate did lock that frag down at the time. Two guys going in middle, oh. are they? Yeah, they are. Lave. Did a little damage there. He knows they're down there. They have one, uh, one CT behind that smoke in middle. Let's see if Glaive can pick up the frag oh. as he rotates. Yes. He's going to pick it up, and they also have a CT down in middle. They're not picking up MSL though, so they're, now they're in on this speed bombs like Pro Pronax with the frag on the pip. Nade goes in, bomb now coming in as well for the Terrace team. Can Glaive go? Oh, one second too late there with the spray. The bomb will go down here. It's going to be a 3v3 post plant scenario. And it's they're gonna pushing be in fast, I think. Oh, it's going to be very important if Nila can come in here with the first frag. He has to look to his left. He's going to look the wrong way, and oh, oh he's not going to land it. And that is going to be 1v3, and that is 0v3, as oh. Team X goes up 8-1. to one. And this is this is really good for Team X because right now they've won the first half. It yep. doesn't matter if they throw the rest away, they're still going to be in the lead. Yeah, and now the Danes are on an eco round as well. Yeah. They're really low on money. Wow. Um, yeah, I mean, that was... <laughs> yeah. The Swedes played that round. <laughs> in quite a weird manner. Oh, they wow. pushed up, pushed out middle, then kind of slowed it down. We're about to fall back. Still got the kills. Took over B, and uh, yeah, they're playing pretty weird, to, to be honest with you. But still, it's working. It's working perfectly for them right now. They're just owning Western Wolves as we speak. I'm really liking the way they're playing right now on Pop the Zero. Team X, oh! Ooh, even sneaky, even Glaive cannot land that. Sneaky peeky. Doing the damage though, but still it's going to be a 2v5 with only pistols for the Western Wolves. And, and this is this is really surprising to me, um, seeing Western Wolves being demolished basically right now by Team X. Yeah. I'm, really, I'm really liking it actually from Team X because this is some fresh play coming in and they are really executing very well. Apart from that one round where they lost, they have been playing perfect Seaside. Exactly, I mean, as I told you, like uh, the only round they've lost, they played it like a fast play on A. 
ever since they've been playing it pretty slow, what they like to do is to kind of unearth this thing as well. They, they, they flash up long and they put one guy uh, sneak behind that blue container and he's trying to get a cheap heal down there. Or if he can, then they're gonna smoke uh, long and then try to get him out of there. And just holding middle and like uh, playing their options. So right now we do have this three man towards Short one guy coming in from Lois as well, and Spitfire in a very defensive position as Perfectly always. Perfectly timed smoke for that catwalk right there, they have oh, three guys wow. there. That was awesome. And now, Kim has to hold it down here together with Nico, and Nico with the AWP. If they decide to come in, they're going to come in with flashes. They have to come in with flashes, but they're not right now. They're just waiting. Could be a fake towards B, this one. Yep. They're just doing the waiting game. They have a minute left here, and they're going to see if they can get an early pick. Pronax is trying to get one for B. Does not accomplish that. Blave getting the first kill of the round, I think. Yep. Now it seems like an A push from Cap. Four men from Cap. No one is going along. Nico with the first one. Nico with the second one. Can he land the third? Nico, the all star play, not going to land it. It's going to be Spitfire answering back. Team in a good position right here. Oh, Lille though answers back. And that's a 1v3, but the bomb's going to go down. So Lille has an actual chance. If he can take this guy down. Oh, what bullets him! Straight to hell. There we go. <laughs> that was insane. Lily about to pick up the four man here. If he can land these two last frags, eats that grenade, does no damage. He has a lot of health too. He's at 100 health HP. Oh, great boost little there coming in from MSL, but good chance, uh, good try from Lily. He came in there, got the bomb down with that one bullet. He made it a 1v2, but then in the end, uh, a nice little boost. If he could have held on for five, 10 seconds longer, yeah. that might have been the time, but. He didn't. Yeah, that round, Nico got those first two picks when they were trying to push from Cap. And I won the round for Western Wolves right there. And now, for the sake of the Danes, I hope they can string some rounds together. Yeah. Otherwise, they're going to be uh, really like looking at their money situation. It's probably quite dire. So if they lose here, they're going to have uh, three guys with less than $2,000 to spend. And th that means at least one acre round. They've taken a little bit of damage there. Through those double doors. Spitfire still with the bomb in a defensive posture, but there's no one to be challenging him in the middle, so it doesn't really matter. Nico is with that orb in an aggressive stance here at long. Looking at the T's there, just playing it really, really slow again, just waiting if, if uh, Western Wolf is gonna start oh. playing aggressively. This was actually a good touch. He's gonna get behind that blue container once again. I think it's Pronax. That's been that guy the entire time in RDL. RDL, RDL. Getting a really important kill there. Oh, and Nico, he's in a, such a top spot, but lands the headshot. Great little shot. It was RDL, not Pronax this time around. Fake on Cap. Let's see here. A bomb is going towards B. But the CTs are rotating, though. There's no one in B right now, so it's looking really good for the T's if they just commit into the site right now. Just one guy sneaking up behind them, actually, and the B side oh. is clear. Oh, but right now they'll know he's there. And uh, it's going to be surely a plant coming in from Team X. It is really hard round for the CDs right now with everyone, every each one of the Team X players being at 100 health. Yeah. So let's see. Hyth is going to hide here below the window. Just going to wait for someone to pop their little head off. It's taking too long right now. And this is taking far too long. They have to push in. It's going to be Pyth with the first one. Little with the second one. Nico answering back with the AWP. But 1v2 with an AWP is going to be uh, really hard. It's going to save it. They should be running away already with the money situation that they are in compared to the T's. Yeah. But they're not. Well, now he has. Yeah, I mean, the only way they could have retaken that side would have been taking it over like right away. Yeah. They waited way too long to uh, try and retake it. Uh, it, there was no way they could do it, and uh, especially with the smoke in there and stuff at the door. They should have just flashed maybe one or two flashes right there and just ran in through the window. Maybe one guy just jumping through the door. Uh, but they just waited way too long, and it was easy pickings for, for the Swedes. So, one by the back of Pronax this time around. Nico aggressive into middle, almost yeah. done that shot through the smoke. Yeah, they're in a save round, as I told you. Uh, <laughs> their money situation is not looking good. And they're not going to be able to buy like everything they want next round either. So. And Nico is the one that has to do the damage right now for Western Wolves. So he lands the first Ooh. one, but that was actually kind of good. Getting yeah. that pick yeah. and then going... Yeah. He can make the difference here, but let's see if he can actually. 
Running through that smoke, he can now hold down middle. He sees one Ooh. that misses the shot and now has to go back into the, that smoke and 19 HP to spare. Not being able to take out guys in middle. The B push um, is going to be... Gonna be MSL yeah. is in a really good position. If he can get lucky here, he gets two kills. And that's actually wow. really important. Two kills yeah, there. They're winning this round. Made the difference. Indeed they did. RDL is going to try his luck with 1v4 with an orb and an AK. He's not going to be really be managing this one. Yeah, he's taken out by Pim, but that's going to be the third round for Western Wolves. Nice. Yeah, nice job. I mean, they got too intimidated by Nico's AWP on A. Yeah. They got a... The Nico got a pick there, and then they just started going B, where uh, they had two-man stack in B, and they got the first, like, three kills right off the bat in yeah. B. And that was round over. Basically, Nico's AWP was the deciding factor that he was able to save that, ra uh, that weapon from last round. And he got that one pick only. Ooh. And that made it so that the terrorists went to B and got owned. Got owned indeed. <laughs> Nico now here at long. It's going to be a two, three man push towards short. And the bomb's going to be there as well. Pyth might be trying his luck from long. So maybe a split A or that split A and then fake into B. Uh, we've been seeing so much. Nico still has no challenge. And there's three guys on catwalk waiting for the flashes. Two guys running in. One getting caught here. Gandalf, Nico missing that shot. Still a CT yeah. on that ramp. First kills are going to be really crucial here. Uh, that was on long, so now Nico has to focus on long. Balance the shot. The Terrace are still coming in, but I think they're going to be caught here. There's no way that Western Wolves cannot win this. Ooh. And all oh, double kill comes in and MSL in the end. But Nico with triple kill right now. Yeah. And as you said before, deciding factor in that round, deciding factor in this round as well. Um, he is the key player for this team, and he's, he's racking up. He's yep. up at 12 and 10. Uh, meanwhile, his teammates haven't even gotten up to 10 yet, so uh, he's, he's, the, he's the reason they have four rounds yeah. at, at the moment. Which is a reasonable amount of uh, rounds at CTU. Like, I think the least you we okay with is five, so if they win this last round, oh, they'll be okay. Yeah, it's going to be all right. It all depends, though, if they can win that, uh, that pistol in yeah, the second half. Definitely. De obviously, yeah. That makes a difference, but uh, it's, it's doable if you get five at CT. Yeah, that's true. So right now, nearly. They're at long, just holding out. The default to strategy, it seems like, from uh, from the Swedes here. The three guys just holding that long door, waiting for a push, pretty much. Uh, getting an easy first kill if someone's pushing long. One guy just holding middle, one guy making sure they're not pushing the tunnels. Uh, and that's where they start to play their game right there. They're just waiting uh, uh, for the early picks, and then they make the decision on where to where to commit. So, here we go, one that guy coming out towards long. And the bomb is actually right now rotating into tunnels, as you can see at your, your top left of the screen. And it's going to be a split B, I think. Clay right now sees someone in middle, takes him out to 19. Is this going to be a B push? The only flash is coming in. They think it's a B push. It's not going to be a B push. Don't Nico catch. takes out one. And oh, they're still just shifting back and forth. Yeah. This is not very really, indecisive right now. Yeah, this is this is really surprising to me because they've been so good at executing in late part of the rounds, but this is just not what we've seen so far. And they're going to have a really tough time. They're going to come in there, going to get that frag. If they can land the second, it's going to be good for them. Well, if not, then it's going to be Mission Impossible, really. And even Nile coming in from behind with 100 HP. Yeah, it's not looking good for the Swedes right now, but... Uh. Here comes Pimp, taking one out, but it will be all on Spitfire. Killed by Nile coming in from behind. And 5 to 10, as you said, the least amount of rounds you can be okay with is 5. They're going to get 5. Yeah, I mean... Uh, that last round, I think the Team X just got caught up with their, like, they, they tried to be too smart, I guess. Yeah. You know? Just uh, indecisiveness a lot of the time. See, that's why you lose rounds on these, Matt. Is, uh, because you start committing somewhere, but then you get flashed, you get, uh, the CTs get the first kill, then you fall back, you rotate, blah, blah, blah. You know, you just get up, make a push. When you, when you decide to go somewhere, just do it. Just go there. So here we go, full long push here coming out. Of this Terry team, who do we have on that corner? It's going to be Pyth. Can he last the first bullet? No, not hitting it, but not taking any damage either. It's a good smoke. A oh, flash. and a good flash it's here. It's going to hold him down there. Oh, go. Nice! <laughs> Double frag through that smoke. Is he going to grab a triple? Looks like it if he can catch this guy on short off guard, but he's going to be flashing. Returning into that CT spawn. One frag coming in from the terrace, and they have the entire A bomb side now. The entirety of the CT team deciding to rotate all through wall. 
Uh, to watch shorty oh they're going to take suddenly it's looking pretty good for the cheese this actually is, this is really weird considering that the cities did get those first two frags did get the smokes down along and now it's just all planted it's one man advantage though for the cities and if they can push in at the same time and blade is pushing going behind them oh nico going nuts here Nico holding it down, might not even need Glaive. He's taken out though, and now Glaive's gonna come in from behind. Billy on the bomb side. Here is Glaive picking up two. It's just on the plate for him, and he takes them both down. Yeah. That's the difference between the strength of the pistols and uh, on this, these two sides. I mean, Block is such an effective weapon compared to the yeah. CT pistol, P2000. Even though Pith, which is going nuts there, <laughs> getting those kills through that smokes, it was pure luck right there. And it looked like a round for the CTs to win. But at the same time, you can get uh, quickly, you can get many kills with the, with the Glock. So uh, uh, suddenly it was clear a sight, and they just got the bump down. They played it perfectly afterwards. Him so, grabbing the double here to start us off in this. Uh, Semi by versus Eco, as we've seen so much here in, uh, in like in general CS history. This is yeah. always what happens. You lose the pistol, you go Eco. Your opponents yeah. are going to buy Galil. So yeah. I mean, I, I, they could play it kind of risky though. Western Wolves did. Uh, just rushing all along, it could have yeah. ended horrendously. But instead, now it ended with uh, Pimp getting those kills. But still, it's, it's a risky move to just rush up there. So we do see Pronax now. One v five. V two thousand in hand. Yep. He's probably not going to clutch in now, too. I don't think so. I'm pretty sure he's not. Let's see the, he's going to walk straight out into his death, and there's not really anything else he can do there. Yeah. And that's going to be 7 to 10, so Wolves now only three rounds away from tying us up. Yeah, it's, it's looking like it's going to be really close here. We got probably a second save round from uh, from the Swedes yep. coming up. Let's see how uh, how Western Wolves plays this anti eco round, because it's really important for them as well not to lose many weapons. So here we go. Is Eco around coming in? Pushing out long again, MSL is. Oh yeah, exactly. Oh, he's uh, just peeking it. He was just checking out how many he can spot uh, there. I think he maybe saw two out of three of them. So he knows there's people along. And they're rotating for a catwalk. Yeah, also, again. Yeah, go ahead. I, they have one CT down there, so they know they're going towards A because well, they had CTs at long and they had CTs in middle. Yeah. So they can hear him. And now Pyth has to pick up a couple of frags, but he's not going to do it. It's going to be... Well, just one, and now Spitfire all alone. Nico picking up the double. But uh, yeah, it's kind of hard, even though you know where the terrorists are going, if you're only with pistols to, to kind of yeah. battle it out. Spitfire will grab a second, so two frags coming in for the CT team in this eco. It's not bad, and uh, he's going to be taken out. Yep. Yeah. Uh, now, now comes the first round, important round, or the second important round of this half here. Yeah. It's a big round for the CTs. They need to start um, getting their game going. I would expect them to be. Uh, quite aggressive, doing something weird yeah. here. I hope so, at least. Yeah. We're gonna have uh, the old battle here Let's in see. the beginning. We have see. Nico with an AWP. Do no we have any battle. CTs? Do, does Spitfire have an AWP? Yeah, Spitfire has an AWP, but he's not picking, uh, not peeking in the middle. He's uh, going. Oh, he's going aggressive on shot. Look at this. You talk about the risky plays. It doesn't pay off. Yeah. He went aggressive. He almost killed that guy in suicide, but Glaive was on there on the box. Took him out, and that's gonna be the 5v4 for Western Wolves. So huge Glaive. kill. Huge, huge kill indeed. Now they should just wait, take their time, execute a good strategy with plenty of splashes and smokes, uh, not doing any hasty decisions. That's the way to win in a situation when you have the upper hand, you know, five on four situation. Just let the CTs do the initiative. As we can see, there's someone pushing down from the lower dark. Oh, he's going to do some damage there. Glaive and MSL both on very low HP. They're going to push into what's the bomb side though. Pushing Cat, coming up Cat. RDL in a good position, getting one kill. Taking out then, but oh, this guy on the ramp is going to do good. It's going to be Lide. Lide has picked up one. He's going to hold down this bomb site. Can he take a second? He grabs wow. that second, and Pimp is now all alone. 1v3. Yeah. That was individual skill. Yep. That round, Lide pretty much won that round because they lost the bomb after Lide, Lide got those kills. Bomb is uh, right now with Lide, and yeah. Pimp has no chance with 20 seconds to go. Yeah, he, he he's. He should probably just save it. Just yeah. wait. He has to take care though because there's one behind him at short. And Lid is gonna pick out peek out there. And that's gonna be the eleventh round for teammates. Yeah, it wasn't gonna happen from that position to save that <laughs> weapon though. So great play by the by Lid especially. He's at a twenty one and ten score. He's having a huge game for Team Axe right now. But also on the other hand, Nico almost a double of well everything else yeah. his team has. Yeah. Twenty to twelve. 
when they are behind. His team is lying on 11 and stuff. And it's kind of the same story we do with the Swedish team. Lid is also on 21 and his nearest teammate is on uh, 14 or 12 and stuff like that. So really two huge players here for each team. For sure, great individual play. And especially on Eco's part, he's playing the op. So uh, usually op players have the kind of, uh, they, they have to have a lot of frags to have uh, influence in, in their play, obviously. And uh, it usually shows on the scoreboard. Right now, it's going to be a yeah. cat push here, short push maybe. Him in that CT spawn, smokes and flashes come out. Lele has to get in a good position. He's really flashed. Oh wow, but he's not seen yet. He picks up one. He knows they're going on to the safe bombs, but Nico lands the shot. And now it's going to be a retake. Pronax knows there's one in middle as well. Uh, Nico straight in there waiting. Uh, that was not Nico at all. That was Pimp. And he's going to. Yeah, he's going to go towards long and he's going to pick that guy out easily. Oh, oh my god. That was a fail. Uh oh. And this could uh -oh. turn into something bad. This is not looking good, but look at the HP of the CT player. Surely MSL and his teammates should be able to land this one. It's 2v2, but RDL is rare, really low on HP, and he's going to come in now, Glaive, with one. And Ronax 1v1 right now against Glaive. This could go well, but the bomb is taken away. He cannot afford to lose any time. He's going to go straight for the defuse hit. But Glaive pops up, takes him out. And the crowd goes nuts. What a clutch from Glaive. Triple kill. League of Legends loves it. Wow, I think Pimp would have kicked himself yeah. a lot if they had lost that round out right there. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, that spraying in, in CSGO can be, uh, you can say it's kind of random at times, but that was just bad. <laughs> yeah, that but, was just yeah, wild. Yeah. Right still, still managed to win. Western the uh, Wolves here, flying up, force by, buying everything they can, their Lils. The yeah, crowd they, liking the force by. Yeah, I mean, they, they won, the, won the round, but they just lost all their money by losing all those weapons. Here we go. Oh, Frax and Smoke are going to come down here towards that CT, and that surely should be the round, basically. They're going to come yep. in with the bomb, and the CTs cannot do anything. They're echoing, but yep. still. Yeah. It's going to be hard. There's nothing to say, so they can just go straight in and die. There's no hope really right now. Yeah, the fact is that had Western Wolves screwed up that round, they would have been on an eco round. They, they had to buy Galos and stuff, so... Uh, luckily, they, they won that round before this one, and it forced Pup. Team X into an eco round. So, 10 to 11. One round away from tying us up here. Western Wolves had a horrific start to this game, but now are getting kind of back into it. And oh. uh, we talked about him, we said his name a lot today, but Nico really has been the deciding factor for Western Wolves. And I cannot repeat this enough this guy, how important he is to Western Wolves, and how important he is in general to the Danish team. It's just, he's, he's one of the main guys, really. Um, and we're going to see now. Took over long. The Danish team took over long. And they're just leaving one guy behind and then rotating towards maybe Cat. Right. Ardio, yeah. yeah. pick up one. In lower dark, he got a kill. He was pushing through the dark, and there's one of the CTs. I think it's Kronax. He's in. Uh, he's in the CT spawn. Uh, the T spawn, I mean. And that's huge. Just get a, That could be a difference in this round if you can. They can, well. they can just lock down and make sure they know exactly yeah. where the terrorists are going. Free kill in mid. Nico knows where that orb is, he's going to take out Spitfire, maybe grab the orb if he gets a second here. He's going to do the damage for not getting the kill, and that's all on MSL, but two very low players. This is actually a doable 1v3 clutch. Uh, it's it's, it's going to be, yeah, 10 and 3 HP, so it's still doable here. But that round came into this situation only because they were playing really ballsy yeah. there, the CTs did. So, bomb's going to go down. Has to watch out from Long. He knows there's a CT down there now with the double flashes. He picks up one, goes for that second. If he can land the second, that one's going to be huge. Flash goes down, it's going to be one pushing up towards the round. He picks it up. Can he land the third one? The bomb is ticking away. And Pronax in a very difficult position. Western Wolves, MSL. MSL is looking good. Switching it up. He knows exactly oh. where he is. Pronax. Wow. 13 HP. Whew. That was close. That was really, really good from both players there. MSL coming in with the triple. Pronax with that clutch. Just going straight for it. He, he didn't see him jump down, but he knew exactly where yeah, he was. Yeah, he had to take the risk, you know. He, he had basically two options. There's going to be somewhere on the side. There's going to be in that corner. And he made the right decision right there. Getting that kill was so close, was it, to win a one on three there? Yeah. Wow. And in such an important round, now looking at the money situation. 
Uh, we're still getting a buy around here, but uh, the CFTs are really, really low on money. Both teams are really low on money. So basically, the winner of this round is going to basically win the next round as well. So a huge round for this game. Oh, it's going to be a three-man stack here towards long. It's going to be Pipe, Spitfire. And OK, they're going to rotate back now. So they did get that first frag onto Pimp, and now they're going to rotate into their normal positions, having being, they, they did that ballsy play, and it paid off, and now they're in the, in the lead here, man-wise, and they can exactly. kick back, relax. Yeah. And uh, Spitfire, I think he's been playing pretty good. Yeah. Even though he's not showing it on the scoreboard, he's had 11 and 13. But still, I think he's been getting a lot of important kills in this game. Yeah. Just go to show the scoreboard does not only tell you the truth about things. Yeah. It's a lot of things that make a difference between winning and losing in a Counter-Strike game. Do take note, guys, if uh, this is one of your first games watching, because that's a common mistake made by a lot of viewers. A lot of the viewers, but some of them are just like, 40, 30 frags. He's the only yeah. guy. Well, well, of course, frags matter, but there's it important the frags, and then there's eco frags. Yeah, and now we go here. It's getting those picks in middle, taking oh. over middle. Going B. Spitfire once more coming in with that frag, and MSL and his teammate in LA. The duo from Sift and Denmark actually lives right next to each other. It's a doable two on three situation for them. Yeah. Let's see here. First skill is so important. Oh, can he grab that second? Second one coming in, he's not going to do it. Nile now, 1v2, can he pick it up? Pied with the double. That was a doable round for uh, for Western Wolves to win as well. A 2-1-3 and B on Dust 2, it is really doable because there's only two points they can come out of. So if you get that first kill, uh, maybe the second kill as well, that's tougher. But instead, not looking too good for the Danish team right now. They're really, they I think they're saving this round. No, they're, Nile is buying, but the rest of them are saving. Oh wow. So um, basically, most likely it's going to be a 14 10 game for the Swedes. And then it's rest for the win for the Danish. Uh, let's see here if um, the Swedes can get up 14 to 10. It would be huge for them. And also, in general, I would say this is kind of an upset. Um, I, I know that Team X are a really good team, but I actually expected more of the Western Wolves. Nico did good, but the rest of the team kind of lacking behind. Pim really, one of the main players in their beginning in CSGO, is sitting 11 to 18. And when your second Mad Fragger is sitting at 11 to, to 18, you're going to have a problem. Yeah, for sure. But like we said it pre-game, it's not all, it's just a few days ago these guys were able to beat NIP. Yeah. The uh, Team X was. Yeah, and go 3 to 0 in a group, in, uh, in the EMS group stages. Yeah. And they, they look perfect. Yeah, exactly. Let's see if Puth can get some kills here. This is going to be facing some T's. Oh, Spitfire. Oh, no, he's not. He's taken out, but Spitfire is still there. Equipped with that pistol, picks up the double. Can he take the triple now? With Aiden, he misses the shot. And he's taken out. So, not a bad eco so far for the fact that Nile bought. This yeah. is doable. Wow. This is this could be huge for for wow. Western Wolves right here. They got the bomb on long. They got an hopper in the pit. <laughs> yeah. Wow. This is, um, they're not gonna lose it. Yeah. If they lose, it's gonna be it's gonna be a joke. <laughs> but also the fact that it's now gonna be 11 to 13, and the We're money's not looking that good. Yeah. Exactly. It's it, all of a sudden the game just turns around completely. It went, it's doing a 180. Him now still on the paper, Clave takes him out. And that is going to be 11 to 13. Great round there from Western Wolves. And Bolts he played buying one Galil and then just clocks and flashes. Yeah, they just played really well. Uh, they went out middle. They were Their initial plan seemed to be that they go through middle, trying to get a kill there, maybe pushing towards B. And then they just fell back and went long. And they got that important kill on Piff at the door on long. They got that important first kill there. And they got the second kill as well, they took over a site, and yeah, it just turned this game around all of a sudden, and we see our, we're CT, the CTs are on an eco right now. Yeah. And looks like a split B push here coming out of the Terrace team, they're going to get that smoke down, take the first bag in the middle, actually no, Pronax grabs the first, uh, the Terrace will be going in here, they will be getting this bomb side, but already one frag and nearly on 7 HP. Uh, I don't know if it's a decision. Uh, just because they're playing this team, but they are doing a really ballsy anti eco strats. Just rushing long and like rushing middle and stuff, yeah. you know? Going into choke points where you can just be annihilated by your opponents. But, you know, it's paying off okay right now, and it's gonna be a 12 13 game in just a matter of seconds. Yep, Bones taken away here, and RDL has actually grabbed himself an AK, so they're gonna save one weapon, grab that one that Glaive lost when yeah. he died. Yeah, I just feel like it's Team X is just throwing away this game right now. 
like that one round they just yeah. lost there with <laughs> against one kill Lil and four locks. Yeah, wow. It was so weird and that also not is just the round but also represent a lot of momentum in this game. Yeah, I mean it, it could have made a difference if Spitfire just had that one frag on long which he missed, then it could have been a completely different yeah, exactly. round. So that's how small details are a matter of winning and losing a game in a tournament like this. Very true. Right now. All right, huge round coming round. up. Ooh, this is going to be really important, and um, I think we're going to go here with Nico to see if he can get that first pick, or if it's going to be Spitfire. No one actually is, is Spitfire even with an orb. Uh, oh, no, doesn't seem like it. He has no no weapon. This is uh, only AK, so this is yeah. uh, full eco. Lidde also has a P350 only. Oh, okay, so, so they are on a eco. Yeah. Apart from uh, RDL, who of course saved that weapon. Yep. Yeah. So this should be easy peasy lemon squeezy for Western Walls. <laughs> Indeed. To go up 13 and 13. Well, considering how this game has gone back and forth, <laughs> you can't say anything with Granite here. That is very true, man. And they are committing towards B. They have two guys there. Spitfire and RDL with the AK. He's going to be a key player. Oh, he's oh. not going to do any damage. Damn. And um, it's now going to be Lede and Pice, both with pistols. 50 I, HP and Lede. Yeah, they could have could have gone hard and long for the Western Wolves. Yeah. I'm uh, just going to pick up one round. No. But yeah, as you said, this round could have gone so wrong if, like, getting in that bomb site, sitting in there with that AK-47. Yep. The terror is coming out of the smoke. There's so much damage you can do. Luckily for Western Wolves, they shot it down early on, so he didn't do a lot of damage, and they got the round. So now it's 30 to 13. And all of a sudden, Western Wolves are on the driver's seat looking at the money situation. Uh, tying up the game, coming from a huge deficit. And uh, it, now it's Western Wolves' game to lose. Yeah, like, look at Nico, he has 10k to spare while his opponents are sitting on $50. Yeah. Really, really big difference in money right now. And if they can go up 14 to 13, team because this is, this, is a, this is a big round. The team X has to win this round. Yeah. There's no possibility otherwise. No options. They were pushing, uh, the teaser pushing Cat slowly. It's looking like a similar round as we've seen before from them. They're smoking the uh, safety spawn, smoking up on the site, flashing and commenting to the site. Let's see what happens here. Oh, let's see, Lide has been a key player so far. Can he be even more key? Spitfire picks up the first one, hides behind his box, not gonna get it. Glaive with a double huge, frag. Huge play by Glaive there, jumping down to the ramp, uh, the safety spawn ramp, getting Spitfire, who's off, uh, was downed by him, and also getting that second kill. Basically making it really hard for the CTs right now to win this round. RDL will pick up one though. Can he pick up a second? Looks oh. good from RDL. Comes in here with the M4. One guy on short still. Two guys on short actually. And are they gonna... Oh, is he gonna take it? Just like that, that round just turned around. Oh, nice shot from Nico to bring it back for Western Wolves. Monax coming in from behind though. If he can land this double here, but he's not gonna do it. Double stack from the CTs, not from the Terrorist. It's gonna be the key movement here. He's gonna have to go for the Fusey infant. Yeah, this is not gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, that's such a such a hard decision there. Wow, I knew he couldn't do anything, and Nico gets a trip. What an insane run right there! First off, Blave getting those first two kills, just uh, destroying that bomb site and taking control of the site. Then all of a sudden, RDL comes from City Spawn, gets two kills, and it looks like a round for um, for Team X to win. But then hmm, Nico with his op, stopping it, and uh, Western Wolves win that round, and a huge round. And now we have a force buy from the CTs of Team X. Yeah, this is basically do like, or die. Yeah, do or die really, because if they lose this, they're gonna the enemies are gonna be on match point, and they're gonna have so much money. So yeah, yeah. I mean, Team X putting it all in now. They have uh, Famasas, They have one shotgun, two Colts. Okay, let's let's see if Western Wolves can play this situation like they should. Just oh, uh, oh wow. wow, huge flashbang coming in and yeah. Well, Pronax is going to do some damage, picking up one. Pythia coming in from behind, he's going to backstab. The bomb's going to be planted B. Glaive right now, if he can take one frag down, he's in a very, very interesting position. He picks up one, he's not going to survive, but it's going to be a 2v2, the bomb's going to go down. It is really hard to take over that B side. They have one flash and one smoke. Spitfire has the flash and has the smoke. Let's see if he can utilize it. He's going to be smoking the tunnel where one of the T's is going yeah. in there. And it's Nico. huge smoke, baby. Oh, Nico though, in that good position, picks up one and nearly with the second. Western Wolves, coming from that huge deficit, are now on map and match point. 
15 to 13. Yeah, it's heartbreaking from if you look at it from the Team X's point of view. Yeah. They so have this game going for them. Wow, and now all of a sudden the Western Wolves are coming out of nowhere and Nico is soon to have 30 kills. 30 bomb from Nico. Might happen here. He is without Orb and he's been playing exceptionally so far. They have, they have Famasas from uh, PT. Is a Glaive just picks up Pi um, while he was insanely flashed. And that's going to be the first man advantage. Can they build on that? Can they get this final round? There's one CT in that middle area. Let's see if we can get over to him. RDL has to play huge here. Can he drop the double? He picks up one. He picks up two. No! Ooh. Nilly with the frag. And that might be the nail in the coffin. Has to go straight towards this B-bomb. So Spitfire has to take a chance. Run through this smoke. Picks up one. It's 2v3. Two CTs now. Looking to turn this around, but is it going to be possible? The bomb is down. Flash is coming over. Really hard. This is a really hard round. Seriously. Let's see here. If Western Wolves win this, it is match over. Game over. It's undoable. Oh, this is going to be so hard. Glaive picks up one. Oh, and it's going to be Glaive in the end GG. with that triple. GG. Congratulations to Western Wolves. They will be winning this match after they were down so much. They did yeah. not look like at all like they could win. Yeah, uh, they looked like dead for a long time there. But then all of a sudden, they started re winning those rounds. Uh, they had basically looked like they had a couple of strats there. One of them going taking over Cat and uh, just doing those smokes and flashes. And then, you know, it's a matter of getting the first kills or not. Uh, and then what they seem to like to do when uh, the CTs were low on money, they wanted to walk out of middle and uh, split the B a lot of the time. Which I... All well, right. We have a little replay ready for you guys here. Of course, uh, DreamHack is the replay coming up now. So we might see a little... Oh, this is a good situation here. Lide coming in with that AK-47. Trying to do a little uh, commentary here as he picks up one. This is actually one of the key, um, key rounds here. And Lide gets that bomb down that's and one bullet. That's a beautiful shot right that, there. That is a beautiful shot right there. Even though he was not able to win this round, it was still a great play by him. Yeah, great play. Great one bullet action coming in there. DreamHack TV instant replay. And that means our friends from Western Walls will go on. They're going to play against NIP Gaming in the next game here. Yeah. And that game is going to go, go ahead and decide who goes straight into that playoff. Who can chill, sit back, relax and not play any more games. Yeah, basically. Uh, it's going to be, uh, like, like we said before, it's going to be a rematch from the Copenhagen Games 2013 finals just a few months ago. So, uh, um, interesting, interesting, interesting. I mean, that this game right here was really, it was, I thought it was a, a lot of fun to watch, yeah. a lot of fun to cast. Uh, a game that went back and forth. I really, I hope it's going to be the same for the next game as well. Yeah, well, we have high hopes here on DreamHack TV. And uh, that next game is going to be coming up in a little while here. I think we, we're going to have a little break, maybe 15 minutes, because the players are going to set up, uh, have to set their gear up once more. So we're going to go to a short break, guys. We'll be back with NIP versus Western Wolves here from DreamHack Summer 2013 Steel Series CSGO Championship. See you then.